Hey, how are we? Are we all good? All right, fantastic. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Appreciate that. Um, actually, uh, for a Saturday, I, uh, I had a very busy day today. Very busy day. I, uh, I put some of those My Family stickers on my car, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't actually have a family. It's just a representation of all the people I've run over the last couple of weeks. So, um, so it's going well. I've got to buy three more dads. So I've been pretty accurate. But... Um, but I tell you what, right, I don't like those My Family stickers because I just find them really pretentious. Because, like, I don't have a family, I live by myself, and I find them really pretentious. You know, people just driving around, just going, oh, look at me, I've got a family, you know, or I've got a car, you know, or I've got a windscreen that doesn't ever break through. It's like, fuck you, you know. <laughs> like I said, I don't have a family, I live by myself, there's no sticker for me, is there? You know, there's no sticker of a prostitute in the boot, is there? No. And, um... <laughs> oh, she's fine now, but, um... <laughs> You know what, right? I actually blame those My Family stickers for the increase in road rage that we've had over the last couple of years, right? And the reason I say that is because you know when someone cuts you off in traffic, okay? You've got that split second in your head to decide whether or not you're going to, like, uh, honk your horn or give them the bird or yell something out to them. And usually, all you've got to go on is, like, the back of someone's head and maybe a pair of eyes in the rear vision mirror. You see those My Family stickers on the car and you're like, I'll take all you motherfuckers on right now. Mum, dad, cat, dog, baby, let's go! It's fucking party time. You know, because you think about it, right? Say, for example, they had, uh, like, uh, my Maori family stickers. No one's going to that fucking car, are they? <laughs> Mum, dad, two kids, 48 cousins. You're not going to that car, I tell you that. <laughs> but I don't have a family. Uh, I, I, I don't have any kids. I haven't had any kids at this stage in life. I don't know if I want kids, but I was reading it uh, in China. In China, they've got that one-child policy. And I love the idea of the one-child policy. Now, if you're not familiar with it, basically it means that each family in China is only allowed to have one child, right? I'm not sure why I explain that. It's not fucking cryptic, OK? But, um, but I actually think that we should introduce the one-child policy into Australia, right? And whenever I bring that up, people are always like, oh, that's a bit harsh, that's a bit harsh. But I've got a bit of a twist on it, right? I think that they should introduce the one-child policy into Australia, but... It only comes into effect, right, only after you've had your second child, right? No, because you think about it, right, how well behaved would those kids be if they knew that at some point one of them had to go? You can just hear the rounds of applause from all the parents in the room just going, that would, yeah, that second, he's onto something there. Because, you know, you'd just be standing there going, what's that? You don't want to go to bed? No worries, champ. Let's see how that works out for you, matey. Because eh? I'm in awe of what parents do. You guys do such a great job. I just don't know how you do what you do. Like, I don't know how you discipline your kids these days, you know, because you're not allowed to smack kids anymore, you know, in public. And I just go... I just don't know how you do it, like, because I have a lot of friends who have children, and to me, these days, it just seems to be all about bribery these days. It's all about bribery, isn't it? It's like, oh, if you be quiet, I'll buy you an ice cream, I'll buy you an ice cream. When I was growing up, that didn't happen. When I was growing up, I just got smacked, you know, with an ice cream. <laughs> just a bubble I built at the back of the head, just bang, and you're like, oh, fuck. How hard he fucking knows, man? Jesus. And I don't know how you teach a child patience these days either. I don't know how you do that because we're such an impatient society. We want everything to happen this second. Everything has to be instant. And, like, like road rage is a symptom of, of uh, our impatience. Like, you know, people losing their mind. Like, oh, I'm on the side. I know I do it. Like, you know, when someone misses a green arrow at a set of traffic lights, I lose my mind, you know. I'm up there banging on their window going, you miss a fucking green arrow, you dickhead, you know. And that's just as a pedestrian. Like, I am fucking unhinged. Like, that is... I've got some issues. <laughs> but I just came back from overseas, just got back from holidays, and, uh, and I love going, like we, as we all do, we love going overseas on holidays, and, and I don't even mind the long haul flight, because I think as Australians we appreciate, you want to go anywhere good around the world, it's a long haul flight, we understand that. My issue with it is, is the fact that you don't get to choose all the people who are on the plane with you, right? <laughs> No, because we're all flies and flies and pretty shit people, right? And there's one person in particular who really annoys me, and I think we've all seen this person, okay? You know when you get to the airport and you're all excited about your overseas trip, and there's always that one fucking idiot just wandering around in the departure lounge like two hours before the flight, just wearing their fucking neck pillow? <laughs> God, they shit me. Just walk around like that going, oh, look at me, mate, come in my head. <laughs> and I always look at them and go, mate, you're not one day old, you can hold your own head up, it's not that difficult, you know? 
And like before I went to fly overseas, this last trip that I took, I saw this one dude and I said, mate, what, what are you going to run now for? He's like, well, I'm going to go to sleep on the plane. He's like, yeah, but the plane doesn't take off for an hour. You're probably going to get onto the plane. You're going to have something to eat. You're going to watch a movie. You're not actually going to need the neck pillow for at least four hours, you know? You don't see me walking around my house two hours before bed just carrying my mattress around on my back just going, oh, yeah. Whew, this shit's getting heavy, but it's going to be worth it, you know? <laughs> Having said that, I am wearing a condom now. But, um... No, you never know, like, at the comments lines. That's what I've heard, and I'm going with that, so... <laughs> But Australia's a great place. Melbourne's a great... I grew up in Melbourne. I love Melbourne. We've got some cool stuff here. Like, I was reading recently that we had a uh, new baby rhinoceros born out of Werribee Zoo. And we get excited in this country when there's a baby animal born in the zoo here, don't we? It's on every news coverage in all the papers and stuff. And, uh, and it's a good thing that animals are being born in captivity. Don't get me wrong. But what annoys me about it is that whenever there's a baby animal born in the zoo in this country, they always give it some kind of weird name. They always give it a name from the country that the animal is from. Like when we had our baby elephant born in the zoo, they called it Marley, because apparently that's a Thai name, because it was a Thai elephant, you know. Like in Adelaide, they got the Chinese panda, so they gave them Chinese names, obviously. And it just annoys me that we always do that in this country. Like we're, not, we're not locked into doing it. Like I can guarantee you, no other country in the world does that. Like I can bet you that there aren't two kangaroos in Bangkok Zoo called Darren and Keith. <laughs> I mean, it'd be fucking great if they were, don't get me wrong, you know. He's got Darren and Keith bouncing around and they just bring in Nolene to mate with him. I reckon that'd be pretty fucking sweet, you know. It's a Saturday night, we can have it's Christmas, people having to drink and stuff, and that's great. I, uh, I recently, uh, recently gave up drinking for a year. Um, yep, yeah, appreciate the support. No, it's all right. I'm normal again. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Uh, I'm normal again. But it was, it was a weird time in my life. Like, some of my friends are very supportive when I said I was going to be giving up drinking. Like, because I said, uh, they'd say stuff like, um, uh, Adam, that's a great idea, mate, because drinking takes years off your life. They'd say, it takes years off your life. But whenever they'd say that, I'd always be like, yeah, but it's not the good years, is it? <laughs> like, it's not 25 to 35. Like, it's instead of dying at 94, I'm dead at 88. You know, you go, oh, no, all those years of shitting myself and not remembering who I am, I'm going to miss out on. Oh. The glory years, you know? But it was hard for my mates to get their head around it because, like, I love a beer. Like, I was the ultimate wingman, you know? You, you need someone to go out for a drink, you shoot your text, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Like, even if you went home, I'd stick it out for 10, 15 hours after you'd left. Like, I was committed to the cause. And so my mates just couldn't believe it that I was going to be giving up for a whole year. And I kind of, I, I, I equate it like this, okay? My mates finding out that I was going to be giving up drinking for a whole year was kind of like discovering that one of your favourite bands is Christian. <laughs> you know, when that happens, you're just like, oh, fucking what? No, oh, no, no. I just thought they were thinking about a really cool friend of theirs who had 12 other cool friends. Oh, this is so embarrassing, you know? But the thing is, right, when you look back at your drinking in isolation, you can make yourself sound like a lot worse at drinking than you actually are. Like, I used to drink by myself, right? Which sounds so much worse than it actually is. But I live by myself, so clearly there are going to be times when I drink by myself. Like, show of hands here, how many people here drink by themselves? Yeah. Alcoholics over there, appreciate it, that's great. No, but it sounds a lot worse than it is. Like, like I said, I live by myself, so clearly I'm going to do it. Like, if I'm having dinner, if I'm having dinner, then I'm going to have a drink, right? It's not that weird. Like, if I'm having a steak, then I'll have a box of wine, yeah? But okay, all right, we'll find out here who has ever had a drink by themselves, okay? Because you know, you know when you are drinking by yourself and you might have had, you know, a couple of wines or a couple of beers, and I reckon it's really strange because you don't realise how pissed you've become because you haven't spoken to anyone for a few hours. You know, you just be sitting on the couch, watching telly, it's not until you, like, get a phone call, come through after a couple of wines, a couple of beers, you get that phone call, and you're just like, hello, and you're like, fucking hell. I'm off a tops here. You're like, no, I can't come here, pull and pick you up. Oh, we are going to go to bed, you know, and you get up off the couch and you see your reflection in the mirror, you're trying to pick a fight with yourself. Because I reckon there is nothing worse than waking up the next morning with a hangover for no reason. You know those times when you walk around your own house just going, oh, for shit house. All I did was watch Downton Abbey last night. And there are a few things that I didn't miss while I wasn't drinking, like a few things. One of the, one of the things that I didn't miss was the, uh, like the alcohol filled violence, the issue with uh, violence around the world, like around, pretty much in every city around Australia, it's an issue. Like people talking during the fucking set, yeah. No, but just, you know, people getting a little bit drunk, a little bit aggressive and stuff, and it's weird because no government knows what to do about it. Like, every, every city's tried something different. Like, remember in Melbourne, they tried that thing called the 2am lockout. Now, 
If you're not familiar with it, basically it meant that after 2 a.m. you couldn't get in anywhere. Even if you'd been in that bar or nightclub the whole night, after 2 a.m. they wouldn't let you back in. And I always wonder, like, who decided that 2 a.m. was the right time? Like, who did they speak to about that? You know? Like, no one gave me a call. And I reckon they must have just spoken to good-looking people, right? Because good-looking people, they couldn't give a stuff about 2 a.m. Right? They've already picked up a midnight and pissed off home. It was desperados like me, he needed till 2.59 to try and clinch a deal, you know? I'd even still be going at eight in the morning going, oh, come on, just come home with me. I'd be like, sir, just take your whopper and fuck off. And the other thing I don't understand are glass things. People get so angry, they want to smash a glass into someone's head. But again, it's part of our society. It's happening. I've got a couple of ideas, right? The government, they can have these for free. I thought one of the things we could do to stop glass things is if we all just start drinking out of sponges. <laughs> so what you do is you hand your sponge over the bar. They just dunk it in your drink for you, hand it back, and you just squeeze out. Because <laughs> seriously, what's the worst thing that happens? You get in a fight, you just throw a wet sponge at someone's head, you know? Just bouncing off like that. They're like, did you just sponge me, motherfucker? Is that what happened? I mean, the worst thing you could do is maybe throw it at someone's crotch, make them look like they're pissed themselves for half an hour, you know? People coming up to go, you have an accident, mate? You're like, no, I just got in a fight. I'll be right in 30 to 35 minutes. Don't about me. I thought one of the other things we could do to stop glass things is do like they do with pens at the bank and just start chaining the glasses down at the bar. So you go to get in a fight, you're like, oh, you are fucked, mate. You're like, oh, you are lucky, my friend. But I'll tell you, the one place I didn't miss going to were cocktail bars, right? Cocktail bars, because they're, they're, so, they're everywhere these days. Everywhere you go, everything is a cocktail bar. And aside from how expensive cocktails are, what annoys me the most about them is just how long it takes to make each drink. Because it takes like 15 minutes to make each drink. There's only ever two barmen on, you know, you'd be three deep in line, you've waited half an hour, and finally you get to the bar. And someone always cuts you off, don't they? You know, and that person's always ordering like the vodka fuck knuckle, you know? <laughs> And you're just standing there going, oh, here we go, you know, because the barman's eyes light up when he hears that because he gets to put on his big song and dance, you know. He's climbing up a ladder to pour a drink from the highest height he can get it from. He's cutting down sugar cane. You know, waiting for a lime tree to grow from a sapling. And you're just standing there going, I just want a fucking beer, mate. You know? Happy to drink out of the trays under the taps. I mean, I've done it before, you know. But I think that annoys me the most about these the barmen in the, in the uh, cocktail bars is the fact that the barmen there call themselves mixologists. It's like, dude, you're a barman, it's okay to be a barman, but don't try and make yourself sound better than you are by calling yourself a mixologist. Like, I don't go to KFC to meet the lords of the deep fry. It's like, fuck off. And I think it shits me the most about these barmen, right? They think they're so cool, don't they? You know when you order a drink and they're like, oh, no, they're off the top of my head and they're spitting bottles around and they're muddling shit and there's sugar and salt flying everywhere. But the one thing they can't do is measure out 30 mil of alcohol without that tiny little tin cup. It's like, oh, can't you feel that one, man? It's like, I'm more liberal with my cough medicine. Does anyone else do that with their cough medicine? Just pour a straight the bottle into their mouth? Just go, yeah. Feels like 15 mil. Like you're ever gonna fucking know, you know? Just walk around your house two hours later, just going, oh, there's more 15 mil, but fuck. I'm really starting to enjoy this cough. You know? <laughs> but I do love Melbourne, it's a great city. The one thing I don't like about it, and it, it, it is a thing that Melbourne's known as a little bit of a fashion capital, isn't it? Like I have friends that come from interstate and they're like, oh, we wanna go clothes shopping here, you know, down Chapel Street and in the city. And I don't, like, I don't like buying clothes in Melbourne just because every store you go into now, everyone's too cool for school. You just get so much attitude when everyone's doing it by clothing. Like last year, right? Prime example, last year, I wanted to buy a new winter jacket, right? So I thought I'd go into QV in the city, grab myself a new jacket. So I walk in there, this one uh, nice store had all these really cool jackets in the window, and I thought, right, this is the place for me. So I walk in there, and the uh, hipster douchebag that's working there, right? <laughs> He's standing at the back of the store, and it was really obvious he wasn't going to come over and help me. And I thought, whatever, Mark, don't need your help. Reckon I know how to shop, okay? So I'd seen these jackets on the rack that I really like. So I try one on, it's a medium, because I'm usually a medium. It's way too small. I'm thinking, all right, must be a winter jacket thing. Don't freak out about this, right? So I try on the large, and the large is still a bit tight across my chest and shoulders. And I'm thinking, all right, a bit of the gym lately? I don't know about myself. So I can't find anything bigger. So I take it off the rack. I walk all the way out to the back of the store. I go, excuse me, buddy. Yeah, you, mate. I go, try this on. It's a large. It doesn't fit me. Have you got anything bigger? And the guy just looks me up and down and goes, yeah? Well, why don't you try and enlarge in the men's? 
It's all right. I'm fucking trying on ladies' jackets, am I? <laughs> Couldn't have told me earlier, you dickhead. <laughs> so I bought it anyway. It looks like a massive. It's a... Uh, it's pretty sweet. But I'm always doing stuff like that to embarrass myself. And you know, at some point in our lives, we all do something so embarrassing that you just want the earth to open up and swallow you up. And you know, sometimes it'd be really simple things like, you know, you know those times when you're out walking, right? You're out walking and you go to step off a gutter and you think that step is a little bit further down than it actually is. So you just step off and do that neck fucking jar thing. And you try and be all casual and walk it off and your spine's hanging out the back of your head. You're like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Or like the first time you ever called a teacher mum. Oh, how embarrassing was that? You know, you've just called the teacher mum. Everyone's laughing at you. You're going bright red. It's the first day of TAFE. <laughs> and it's even easier to embarrass yourself when you go to introduce yourself. I don't know who else has done this, but you know when you go to shake someone's hand, right? And you mistime your grip and you just grab their fingers. Because you both know, you just stand there going, that's right, mate, I'm on your fucking fingers now, aren't I? <laughs> now you think I'm some kind of weird, dirty finger grabber, don't you? Because there's a lot of etiquette to handshakes. I don't understand the handshake. I do it, I don't know why I do it. It's like two guys have rocked up, one goes, I have a hand, and the other goes, well, I have a hand too. And they just touch them, you know? Because it's a really weird custom. Someone once told me it's to show that you're unarmed. Well, I don't get that either, but it's like, I'm unarmed. <laughs> If it's to truly show you're unarmed, you'd have to do the double handshake and be like, hey, go, mate. <laughs> and it's even easier to embarrass yourself in conversation as well. I don't know who else done this, but you know when uh, someone asks you a question and your brain thinks of two possible answers, but you can't pick which word you want to use, so just fucking blend those words together? Like someone will go to you, hey, you going? You think great, you think good, but you can't pick which word you want to use. You go, yeah, I'm good. And even as you're saying it, you're bailing out on it. You're like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and when you do that, you know, you feel like such a funt. <laughs> but I reckon the worst one, I did this recently, the worst one is when you've got an answer locked and loaded, ready to go to a question you think you're gonna get asked, but they throw you a bit of a curveball question. Like someone will come up to you and go, nice day, huh? And you go, yeah, good, thanks. You're like, That shit. But I tell you, the other thing about clothes shopping is how expensive everything is these days. It's so pricey. Like, I wanted to buy a new pair of boxer shorts recently. I was looking at spending like maybe uh, $20, $25. I thought that was reasonable. So I go into Maya and they had the, you know, that brand Dolce Gabbana, right? They had a pair of Dolce Gabbana boxer shorts that were 89 bucks, right? And I remember just looking at those and going, $89 for something that essentially just stops your genitals from touching your pants, you know? I mean, I'll do that for 50 bucks. All right, 40, but that's almost my final offer. But I just thought, that is a lot to pay. Like, I understand girls, you pay a lot for underwear. I get that. It's because girls, you have sexy underwear. But guys, we don't really have sexy underwear, do we? Guys, basically, I have two types of underwear. We have normal underwear, and if it's a special occasion, we have underwear we didn't have on yesterday. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, right, I'm not very good with women's underwear. I'm not very good with the undoing of the bra, right? Because, you know, there's those times when you're with your partner, or your wife, your girlfriend, whoever it happens to be, and as a guy, you have your top off, and the girl has her top off with her bra still on. You know, like you're in the bedroom, you're on the train, whatever the fuck happened to be, right? <laughs> and you know there's those times when you're having a bit of a passion, you go to undo your bra, there's those times when you nail it in one go. And I reckon when that happens, both of you are really impressed by that in your own heads. <laughs> you know, just having a bit of a passion, you just go ping, and in your head, like, that was fucking awesome, I've never done that before. <laughs> I'm gonna tell the boys out of club about that. <laughs> Because, you know, there's those other times where it doesn't happen like that. You know, you're just having a bit of a passion. You go to undo the bra and it doesn't come undone first go. You just have that little bit of a panic in your head. You're like, oh, don't, don't, don't forget. Just like, up, and, up and back and out and out and up. And how many fucking classes are on this thing, man? And because we're guys and we can't concentrate on two things at once, our kissing just goes to shit. We basically just end up standing there like this, just going... I think you should go home. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the one place I don't like going shopping anymore, and that's the supermarket. And I can't stand... I never used to have an issue with the supermarket, but because of those self-service checkouts that are in all of them now, 
I just can't get my head around them. Because every time I go through the self-service bit, the first thing I think is, why the fuck am I doing your job, you know? Like, I don't go to the pub and pour myself a beer since I've been banned. It's like, why? And I'll be honest, the real reason I don't like the self-service checkouts is because they're confusing. It's not as straightforward as you think it's going to be. Like, in your head, you think, all right, I'll grab my stuff, I'll scan it through, put it in the bag, put my money in, get my change, get my receipt, get the hell out of there, right? Never plays out like that. Like, recently, I wanted to buy a watermelon, right? Which I thought was going to be a fairly simple process, okay? <laughs> Turns out, no, it's not. Right, so, I've got my watermelon, and you know sometimes when you're going back through the self-service bit and you're buying fruit and veg, it comes up with the alphabet, and you've got to pick the letter with which it begins. Now, stupidly, I had been spelling watermelon with the W my whole life, right? <laughs> Turns out that's fucking wrong, right? So I've got my watermelon, I'm pressing W, nothing's coming up, okay? So I call the bloke over to do the job he should have been doing in the fucking first place. I go, mate, I'm trying to buy this watermelon here. I've been pressing W for 10 minutes, nothing's coming up. And the bloke just looks at me and goes, oh, watermelon? No, that's under M for melon. I was like, who the hell calls that a melon, you know? Like, you don't have friends over for dinner. You go, you guys want some melon? They're like, yeah, what sort? You go, water? <laughs> the only advantage I can see to those self-service checkouts is the fact that you never have to pay full price for hydroponic tomatoes ever again. <laughs> you know, when you're going through it, so what kind of tomatoes? You're like, yeah, fucking normal ones. All righty, let's... Uh... And I've got a really good tip for you, right? If you want to save yourself some money, do what I do. You save yourself a buck a load of cash, right? So, when I get into the supermarket, knowing I'm going to be going back through the self-service checkout, what I do is I grab a uh, home brand can of baked beans off the shelf. Now, they're about 60 cents or so. And what I do is I take the barcode off the home brand can of baked beans and I stick it to the back of my hand. And that way, whatever you scan through, just reads the bottom of your hand. It's fucking great. You can buy anything, you know? Punnet of blueberries. Boop, 60 cents, all right? Big list around, boop, 60 cents, all right, yeah, fuck this guy, you know. 90 kilos of prosciutto, boop, 60 cents, all right, yeah, fuck, you know. You go, well, what do you know, it turns out you can feed the whole family for under 10 bucks here to stay, you dickhead. <laughs> Guys, you've been absolutely fantastic. You can have a ball with Mick Malloy coming up very shortly. Enjoy the rest of your night. Cheers. Thank you.